And the Yawm Al-Qiyamah is described in many ayat and a hadith, but it describes specific things of the Day of Judgment. It's difficult to form a comprehensive picture of what's going to happen first, then second, then third, then fourth. This is something that is a little bit uh, difficult to, to piece together. Our scholars have attempted to do so. And very briefly, the Day of Judgment itself the Quran says it's going to be 50,000 years of your reckoning. 50,000 years of your reckoning. However, for the believers, this time will go by, like the Prophet ﷺ said, as the time between Asr and Maghrib. As the time, just Asr and Maghrib, how much time? This is going to go by like that. But for the disbelievers, for the non-Muslims, this is going to be a torture in and of itself. And on this day, on the Day of Judgment, there will be no water other than the water that is provided by the hawl or the pool of every prophet. Every prophet will be given a pool of water. And the only people who get to drink from the pool are the believers in the prophet. And the largest pool will be the pool of our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he will personally be inviting, you have to get an invitation to drink. And he will be inviting his ummah. And the sahaba said, how will you know your ummah? And we're gonna be so many, and you haven't seen all of them. He said, I will recognize them from the effects of wudu. Their hands and their foreheads. Their hands and their foreheads and their limbs are going to be shining bright from the effects of wudu. So looking at humanity, anybody who's been doing wudu regularly, our Prophet will recognize him and he will call him out to drink from the hawd. And once you drink from the hawd, the thirst of the day of judgment will be quenched. You're not going to feel thirsty on that day. There's also only one shade on the day of judgment. And that is the shade of the throne of Allah. And that is the shade of the throne of Allah. And that is why one of the du'as that we make, Allahumma adhillana tahta dhilli arshik. Oh Allah, shade us under the shelter of your shade when there is no shade other than your shade. That day is going to become a torture in and of itself. And the people, Muslim and non-Muslim, are all going to gather together and begin discussing what can we do. How can we get over this day? The day itself is torture. And the kafir will be ready to accept the fire of hell rather than to continue the day of judgment. And so Muslim and non-Muslim, the whole humanity will come together and they will go and ask first and foremost Adam alayhi salam. And they will say, Oh Adam, you are our father. And Allah created you with his hands and he blew his spirit into you. Why don't you go to Allah and beg him to start the day of judgment? And Adam will say, I committed a sin I should not have done. I ate from the tree. I am worried about myself. I don't care about you. I'm worried about myself. Nafsi, nafsi. Go to somebody else. Go to Nuh. They will go to Nuh. Nuh will say the same thing. And he'll mention a sin. He th thinks it's a sin that he's done. He'll say, go to somebody else. They will go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. He will say the same thing. Go to somebody else. I'm worried about myself. They'll go to Musa alayhi salam. He will say, I killed the, 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 the Qibti, the Coptic in, in Egypt. I killed him. And I'm worried about that. And I'm worried about myself. Go to somebody else. They're going to go to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will also say, I'm worried about myself. Go to somebody else. And they will go to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. All of humanity, from the first to the last, from the Muslim to the Kafir, from the Inns to the Jinn, all of humanity as a delegation will go to our Prophet and they will say, Ya Rasulullah, Allah chose you above the creation and Allah made you the Khatim Al-Anbiya and Allah did this and Allah did that. Why don't you go to Allah and plead with Him to begin the Day of Judgment, to begin the reckoning, the Hisab. And so the Prophet will say, Ana laha, ana laha. This is my responsibility. This is my responsibility. And this is called Al Maqam Al Mahmud. This is called the praiseworthy station that the Prophet will be praised by the entire creation by, for doing this shafa'ah. Ah. And that will begin the Day of Judgment. And the Day of Judgment will begin by setting up mawazin. We're going to place mizan, skills. And there's going to be skills for every single person. You will have your own scale waiting for you. And there's going to be three types of people when it comes to the scale. Three types of people. The first, يَدْخُلُونَ jannata بِغَيْرِ hisab. <coughs> They're going to enter Jannah without any hisab, which means they skip the skills. And this is going to be the elite of the elite. Not even the average elite, if you like, if there's such a thing. This is going to be the highest, the creme de la creme, as they say. The Prophet ﷺ said that there's going to be only 70,000 people. Now you think 70,000 is a huge amount. 
do the calculations. Right now we're one billion Muslims. Add to that all the Muslims from the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Add to that till the day of judgment. And then he said there's going to be 70,000, which is then a drop in the bucket. 70,000, they will enter Jannah without hisab. In one version he says, for every one of these, Allah will grant another 70,000. So you do the math, it's 1.49 million. Still, 1.49 million is not, you know, it's not that much. Nonetheless, this is going to be يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِغَيْرِ hisab. They don't even have to go through the hisab. There's not going to be a, a weighing. And this is what we strive and ask Allah for, even though we realize it's going to be for that elite. Who they are, that's a topic of another discussion. The, the second category when it comes to the hisab, is that they're going to have a generic hisab. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ made a dua to Allah that, Oh, oh Allah, uh, we want Hasibna uh, Hisab and Yasira. We want to have an easy Hisab. Aisha asked, What does this mean? Uh, what is a Hisab and Yasira? And so the Prophet ﷺ said, This is just the Ard, this is just to show. It's not, it's not going to be each individual item. It's going to be, how, how do I say this? Uh, I mean, a, a general check, if you like, right? It's a, gen, a general uh, sheet. It's not gonna, you're not gonna be stopped for every individual item, right? You're not, there's not gonna be a tax accountant coming and stopping you, right? That, it's a general, like most of our tax IRS just takes it without looking. But when they do an audit, what happens? We begin to sweat and we begin to make dua to Allah and what that. So this is hisab yasir, that you just let it go. And this will be given for the righteous of the believers. The average righteous of the believers who have done good and who have minimal sins, their hisab will be generic hisab. The rest of mankind, this is the kafir and the fasiq, i.e. the non-Muslim and the Muslim with very weak iman, that person will be getting an individual, individualized hisab. Every single point, didn't you do this? Didn't you do that? Why did you do this? And that will be a torture in and of itself. For the Muslims, some of them, this type of hisab will be their punishment and Allah will forgive them. Because of that punishment, because simply being questioned by Allah is of course a punishment. And some of them deserve just that much punishment. So this hisab is their punishment that will cause them to then enter Jannah. They've gotten rid of the sin that they have. For others, this punishment is the beginning of yet further punishment. When the hisab is over, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy all lights. There will be no lights at all. Everything will be إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ the, the sun will be enveloped into itself and the stars will disappear and the moon will vanish. There's not going to be a single source of light. That is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give each of us an individual light. Our bodies will begin to shine the light of Iman. And the stronger was our Iman, the stronger will our bodies be shining the light. يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ On that day, you will find the believers, their nur is coming forth in front of them. And this nur will guide them. Now, you cannot be guided by anybody else's nur. You have to be guided by your own nur. Where will the nur guide you? It will guide you to the sirat. Because the hisab is finished, but you're still not close to Jannah. You need to get to Jannah. And you need to go to Jannah. And the believers will use their light to find the sirat, to cross over it, and then to get to Jannah. If you don't have the light, what's going to happen? The Jahannam is right there because the sirat or the bridge is over Jahannam. Right, that's what a sirat is, it's over Jahannam. And if you don't get the bridge, you fall in. And if you slip on the bridge, you fall in. So the majority, the bulk of mankind, they're not even going to find the sirat. Even those who find it, the Prophet ﷺ said that on the sirat, when people are walking, there are going to be uh, claws and hooks coming out. Just like you see in movies or in cartoons, this, these concepts are in humanity. Allah put it in there. There are going to be claws coming out. From Jahannam, there are going to be claws coming out, taking people who don't deserve to cross over. Even if they found it with their light, still it wasn't strong enough to get over. Also the light will be proportional to the Iman, and also the speed at which you cross over the Sirat will be proportional to your Iman as well. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and I find this a very deep uh, hadith in a physical sense, those who are interested in Einsteinian physics, the Prophet ﷺ said that the fastest of them will go like the speed of light. Kalbarq, right? The number one category. We know, and from, from what we know, this is the fastest speed, as we know in modern physics. And the Prophet said, the fastest of them will go like the speed of light. 
And then he said, and then there were going to be people going as if they're on the fastest horse imaginable. And then, and then, and then. So he keeps on going down. So the bottom line, the stronger your iman, the stronger the light, and the faster you go over the sirat. And the sirat is not a normal bridge. The Prophet ﷺ said, the sirat is thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword. Thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword. You can only cross if Allah allows you to cross. And at the end of the sirat will be all the prophets of Allah waiting for their ummah to cross over. And all of them will be saying the same thing. Sallim Allahumma sallim. Sallim Allahumma sallim. Oh Allah, peace. Oh Allah, peace. Because they want their ummah to cross over. And as they cross over, still there's one marhala, there's one phase left. Of course, to cross over the sirat means alhamdulillah, you're basically in Jannah. But right between the sirat and the door of Jannah, there is one large area. The hadith call it the qantara. The hadith call it the qantara. And this is the final stage. The qantara will be for the righteous believers who have overall entered Jannah. They're good people, but they have sins related to the men. Backbiting, stealing, slander, doing something wrong to another person. You see, Allah can forgive what's between Him and, and, and us. But if you slander somebody else, you need to have that person forgive you as well. And that's going to be the qantara. Allah's hisab is finished. Now the hisab that you have done, the wrong that you have done to other people, that will be the qantara. And the majority of people who get to the qantara, it's going to be a readjustment of the level of Jannah. So instead of going to a high level, you might go lower because of something that you have done for somebody else. Uh, you, as we said, backbiting, slander, ghiba, whatnot. This is going to lower your level uh, and it's gonna, your hasanat will be given to this person and that person will get a higher place because of what you have done. This is the qantara. And that is the final stage after which insha'Allah ta'ala will be the doors of Jannah. Now bottom line is all of this it comes with Iman al ghaib This is not science. This is not you cannot prove it. It comes with our Iman. And if we truly believe in these texts and if we truly believe in the message of the Quran, we should be thinking and visualizing and, and, and fearing this day. And Allah talks about this day, as we said, in over a hundred surahs. And Allah mentions, this is a day, يَوْمًا يَجْعَلُ الْوِلْدَانَ shiba. It is a day when the young children themselves will become old men. And our Prophet ﷺ said, uh, sorry, Abu Bakr said to our Prophet ﷺ, O Messenger of Allah, I see that your hair has grown white. What is the matter with that? Why has your hair grown right so fast? And so he said, Shayyabatni hudun wa akhawatuha. That what has made me white is Surah Hud. And another hadith he said, An amma tasa'anun, an idha shamsu kuwirat. And he mentioned three or four surahs. These surahs have made my hair grow white. And if you look at each one of these surahs, the bulk of it deals with the Day of Judgment and the description of the Day of Judgment. Our Prophet's hair grew white thinking about the Day of Judgment. Where do we stand and how often do we ever think about it? This is something that we need to compare about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are prepared for the Day of Judgment and who have thabat when we are questioned and who give us easy hisab and who can cause us to enter Jannah bi ghayri hisab wa la adab wa akhru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.